Hi folks, I trust you're well, and particularly this uh, Lord's Day, as we work our way through the day, I'm sure there'll be plenty of opportunities to worship uh, with uh, Zoom and YouTube and Facebook and all the other different means that people are using, telephone and, uh, and scripts that are going out by email for people to read over. But uh, for this morning, hopefully we can get something out of our Bible reading challenge. We've been working our way through different Gospels and letters. Uh, we have still the Gospel of Mark to do later this year, but through the course of this year, we will complete, hopefully, God willing, the whole of the New Testament of the Bible. And uh, that really is quite an, an enjoyable and exciting thing to be able to have done. Uh, today, we're starting with a new letter, having finished the Gospel of John. Um, and it's interesting, if, if you followed with us when we looked at the letters of John and some of the concerns that were going on at the, the end of that uh, century, the end of the first century, maybe about 1890 AD and, and onwards, um, some of these concerns were already coming into the Christian congregation earlier on as well. We're looking at the book or the letter to the Galatians, the congregation that was in Galatia, and uh, it was probably written late uh, AD 40, early 50s, so about 15 to 20 years after Christ's death and resurrection and his ministry. So let's see what we make of this, this writing of Paul, and see if we can get some encouragement out of it for ourselves today. Reading from the beginning. Paul an apostle, not from men nor through men, uh, or through man rather, but through Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead, and all the brothers who are with me to the churches of Galatia. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins to deliver us from the present evil age, according to the will of our God and Father, to whom be the glory for ever and ever. Amen. I'm astonished that you are so quickly deserting him who called you in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. Not that there is another one, but there are some who trouble you and want to distort the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to the one we preach to you, let him be accursed. And we've said before, so now I say again, if anyone is preaching to you a gospel contrary to the one you received, let him be accursed. For am I now seeking the approval of man or, or of God? Or am I trying to please man? If I was still trying to please man, I would not be a servant of Christ. For I would have you know, brothers, that the gospel that was preached by me is not man's gospel. For I did not receive it from any man, nor was I taught it, but I received it through a revelation of Jesus Christ. Few have heard of my former life in Judaism, how I persecuted the church of God violently and tried to destroy it. And I was advancing in Judaism beyond many of my own age among my people, so extremely zealous was I for the traditions of my fathers. But when he who had set me apart before I was born, and who called me by his grace, was pleased to reveal his Son to me, in order that I might preach him among the Gentiles, I did not immediately consult with anyone, nor did I go up to Jerusalem to those who were apostles before me. But I went into Arabia and returned again to Damascus. Then after three years I went to Jerusalem to visit Cephas and remained with him fifteen days. But I saw none of the other apostles except James, the Lord's brother. In what I am writing to you before God, I do not lie. Then I went into the regions of Syria and Cilicia, and I was still unknown in person to the churches of Judea that are in Christ. They only were hearing it said, He who used to persecute us is now preaching the faith he once tried to destroy. And they glorified God because of me. Amen. So Paul gives a little bit of testimony of what happened in his own life as he's uh, talking here uh, about, to uh, the congregation in Galatia about what's going on and how his own perspective on things is very much that the gospel he's received and that he's handed on to others is that that's come from Christ himself. He bears testimony to Christ. But it seems there were those who were following around behind him, going from different areas around, particularly in the synagogues, uh, those who um, were particularly trying to push the idea of uh, the, the Jewish faith and all the requirements of the Jewish faith upon these new um, 
uh, converts uh, from amongst the Gentile nations, of which, of course, Galatia was one. Uh, and he's really concerned about this. And you'll recall when we, perhaps when we were reading through the letters of John, John was concerned about this as well, even later still. But at this time, there are, there are real concerns about what they're trying to uh, encourage uh, different Christians to have to do, the extra burdens that they were placing upon them. We find here a gospel that, that is very much attributed to the Father, the Son, and as we'll see later on, the work of the Holy Spirit. Uh, this, this, uh, these are the kind of themes that really are threaded throughout uh, this whole letter to uh, the Galatians. There are um, six chapters. We'll then have a look at the themes of that next Saturday uh, that we've discovered throughout the, this particular letter. Uh, but certainly in this first letter, we, we have some encouragement here. And the kind of encouragement I'd like to give you today, uh, particularly from this, uh, this gospel, and I think Paul himself gives this encouragement, is that it's very easy to get wrapped up in trying to please other people and, and how we're perceived can be so important to us. I hope to mention this a little bit later in our service uh, from the church, and I hope you'll, you'll uh, tune into that on this self-same channel, about how our priorities in life very much can be affected by those around us. We, we, we look at what people think of us and, and we view the way people think of us as, as being of a high priority. Is it really a high priority or is God's view far more important to us? Paul, it seems, had a period in his life where trying to get people's uh, acclaim from other people and people's plaudits was, was what he was looking for. He was trying to be encouraged by, by the way that other people viewed him. He worked hard. He was zealous for the religion and the traditions of his forefathers. And, and he certainly was receiving some encouragement that way. But it seems that Christ himself, as we've seen when we looked at the, in the book of Acts uh, earlier in the year, earlier in the summer, in fact, um, he, he realized through this encounter he had with Christ that he'd actually been going down a completely wrong track and it needed, his life needed to be centered on Christ and that should have been his priority. And so we see this in, in this particular uh, letter, that the, the gospel that he's preached to, to all the places that he went in is one that's centered on Christ. And with Christ at the center of all we do, and the priority in our lives being God in Christ, then we really don't go too far wrong. That's an encouragement for us perhaps today um, on the weekend, but, but also throughout the week as well. It's very easy to, easy to get wrapped up in what other people think of us. Paul was determined to not let that take place ever again. Uh, he, he knew, he, he felt he was sure that God was walking with him. And if we have that same kind of assurance, perhaps we can take the time to think on that and, and realize that actually we don't need to worry what other people think. As we go on in life, perhaps we realize that more and more. We start to realize that, you know, why were we so concerned about what other people thought of us and what they might say about us? It really means very, very little indeed. Paul certainly has, has tumbled to that, but the, the angle that he's coming on it from has been specifically because he realizes God is far more important to him than those who might otherwise um, tell, him, tell him otherwise and try to distract him with, with the way he ought to live his life. There were those even in the Christian congregation at this time that were doing that to some. I pray that us, like them, won't listen. We'll have words of caution that are, are given in our ears to be able to concentrate on Christ, to listen to what Christ has to say, and to be blessed by that. That, I think, is a life lesson. It isn't just a, a lesson for Christianity, although it, it really does thrive in that particular situation, but in all our aspects, in our working life, in our relationships with others, social contexts, uh, caring too much for what other people think about us can be a real concern. I'm not suggesting for one minute we need to be antisocial or, or so, uh, sociopathic. Um, we, we do keep an eye on what other pe people around and about us might be doing. And we need to fit in with society in general, to a degree. But most importantly, is how God feels about us. And we have, we have that encouragement and have that, again, that assurance. I don't think we'll go too wrong in life. I hope that's helpful. I don't want to belabor it because we've, we've got plenty of other things to consider today, particularly of a spiritual nature, I hope. But for now, let's have a wee word of prayer and continue on with our day. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we give thanks to you that you sent Jesus into the world to minister to us, 
to all those who are around him at that time, and that testimony has been passed on even to us in our own generation. Fortunately for us, he didn't bow down to what other people thought of him, or what might uh, uh, they might their views of him, and, and just just how they might have treated him. And, and neither did those who followed him. The apostles, one and all, followed after. Uh, the example that Christ had given. They followed Christ, the, the man, Christ divine. And we thank you that we have both his example and theirs to help us steer a course in life that puts things in the right perspective, puts things in the right priority. Help us to ever to focus on Christ as he brings us to you, Heavenly Father. May the Holy Spirit open our minds in these things. And may our priorities, because we're, we're thinking of, of reciprocating that love that you've given us, also be shown out in all our relationships as we love our neighbour as ourselves. That is a theme that has come through so many times in what we've been reading in the New Testament. And we pray, Lord, that we would pay heed to it, even at this time, as we reflect on what we've heard in this particular chapter of this letter that Paul himself has delivered to the Christian church. That we might keep things in perspective, and particularly we might follow God and not humankind. Bless us, please, as we work our way through this day. In all the lessons we might learn this day, we pray that there would be a blessing and a benefit to us. And as we continue to walk with you by our side, may we be blessed. Hear us for the sake of Christ, we pray. Amen. I'm not going to hold us back just now because, as I say, there's plenty of us for us to be thinking about. But I hope you'll continue with us with us as we read through uh, this uh, letter to the Galatians, uh, just a chapter a day as we work our way through this week. It's not too onerous. It really, it really isn't uh, as we work our way through that this week. But until the next time, God bless. Take care and bye for now.